hockey card fanatics. Welcome to the Near Mint Hockey Card Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Krieg, and we have episode 20 for you today. The big 2-0 dedicated to my man, Sebastian Ajo, who I think is one of the more underrated players in the league, and his cards kind of mimic that sentiment. He's not um, that flashy. Well, actually, he is kind of flashy. He's not like a flashy individual, though. You know, he's not like a huge personality, and he's getting overshadowed a little bit by Svechnikov scoring goals with his stick wrapping around the net like crazy and things like that. But Sebastian Ajo uh, was, fun fact, the youngest player in Kane's franchise history to score a hat trick, which is kind of cool. The Kane's franchise being the Kane's Whalers, just so we're clear. Um, And the guy's been putting up a point per game pace in the last three full seasons. You know, he basically did that in the playoffs. He was a couple points sh- short. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you're you're looking at it right now. I've got the chronology base card of his up, and that is going to be our topic today. We are going to go through what uh, to expect in the chronology boxes, talk a little bit about my likes and dislikes in the product, a little bit of a review. We'll talk a little bit about how the industry is... Uh, Mm, so-so on this let's call it we're also going to go through the deep dives uh so we did this a little bit back uh i don't know i guess it was three four weeks ago we did this for sp authentic we're going to do it again for chronology we're going to go through some of the best hits you can get the best cards that have been selling the best cards that are listed right now um all the different variants and things you can find in here it's a little bit of a complicated one so uh, I actually learned a lot looking through all the cards, and I hope you do as well. And then at the end, we are going to open uh, one box of Chronology, and we're also going to rip open a couple of the time capsules. I've got a couple of those here for you. That's going to be a lot of fun. But before before I dive into Chronology, I first want to just thank everyone who listens and tunes in live. There's people live in our Twitch chat right now, so hello and thank you to all of those folks and those of you that follow on social media put out a question this week asking what you'd like me to talk about so thank you very much for your suggestions and i am going to make some sweet new content with what you want to hear about so follow uh, me at near mint hockey if you don't already obviously and you know subscribe and all those awesome things it really helps and uh, i'll keep making some sweet content and uh yeah today actually is a big day in the hockey card world if you don't know this already which if you've been on social media today you probably have the cup came out today 2019 20 the cup it's always a year backdated i guess you could call it because it's, you know, it's got to feature the teams that won the cup. And this is like the most premium of premium products in the hockey card world. Uh, one day I will open a box, but I did not pre-order the cup this year. And I feel like that's going to be the only way I'm going to do it. Because as soon as the pre-orders are sold out or the, the stock in the stores are sold out, the price gets pretty absurd. I mean, it's pretty high anyways. Pre-orders can be... Uh, you know, six, seven hundred, eight hundred dollars the price out of the stores. It's uh, it's a lot more afterwards. You know, the McDavid box people are asking for basically whatever they want, and you're looking at thousands for a box. Otherwise, it's so much that I haven't even really considered buying one. One day I will, and I'd love to do a deep dive on the cup as well. It's a it's the premium product, right? You. You open it, you get six cards. There's only six cards in the cup. You get two two autos on average. And uh, these are the big boys that people are looking for, or some of them. Rookie patch autos are the the thing that the cup is big for. This is like, you know, maybe the third most bought and sold rookie card. At least like the third thing that I, I think about when I think about rookie cards. Uh, it's Young Guns, Future Watch Auto, and the cup rookie patch auto. If you're a rookie patch auto type of guy, the cup is a product for you. Now, if you're like stoked about these, I would say probably 
just go buy these once they're out. You don't need to like open the open the boxes and get them. Although I can imagine that would be a hell of a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, they're they're a pretty nice set, uh, and I saw some really really nice pulls today uh, that people are getting. And then the other piece of news that I think is pretty interesting is ClearCut comes out on uh, the 24th of February. Now this is a bit of an odd product. You're opening it and you get one card. You get one card and you know, that's your card. Now it comes in a one touch. It's like all protected. Every card has an autograph and the cards are actually really sick. Like <laughs> I, I really do think the cards inside are maybe worth it. Now it's an, it's also like an expensive box for one card, right? And like you're not obviously not guaranteed to get that big hit, but you know, you can get Kirby Doc rookie debut autographs numbered out of 10. This is where you get like the Matthews Young Guns that is now autographed. It's like it's just autograph central on rookie cards. And it's it's really really cool. Uh, I would love to open more of it, but like I said, it's it's a pretty premium product, so you got to really pay to find those hits. But the stuff that comes out of it is is just wonderful. Yeah, I'd probably go towards that instead of the cup myself if I had the choice. So. Those are our big releases of February. It's a big month in the hockey card world. Yeah, go join some breaks or watch some breaks uh, of the cup. It's pretty exciting. Um, but from a money perspective, it's it's just really not a good investment. You're better off putting it elsewhere, but it's a lot of fun to watch. So let's go to Chronology Volume 2. Uh, we're going to focus on Volume 2 today. Uh, that was the volume that came out in December of 2020, so like not even three months ago. I think it was the 2nd of December, and it's the second in the series. So there was a Chronology Volume 1 that came out, and this one has been out for three-ish months. And uh, it's a product I've never opened before, so I was kind of intrigued when I saw... The first thing I saw was the time capsules. I was like, what is that? Why are cards coming out of this card? I'll get into it a little bit more, but you actually open this and then get another card out of it. So I wanted to learn more about it. I wanted to open some, and so I'm going to share some of that knowledge with you. And uh, it's, it's, it's... I don't know if it's like going to be one of my favorite sets or even a go-to set like future watch auto sp authentic is my favorite set but there's some pretty cool stuff in here um it's very signature focused upper deck said that there's about 200 players and a lot of them haven't been signing stuff recently so you have the opportunity to get some autographed cards from players that maybe you couldn't in other products for the last few years i like this product because there's on-card autos on lots of things. There's not really sticker autos. There's a couple, but it's only on like a couple of the big hits. Some of the autos are done in gold and silver, which is pretty rad. There's some nice patches in there. I'm not normally like a patches guy, but there's some really, really cool looking patches and cool looking patch card designs. So that's something. There's literal diamonds in some of these boxes. Uh, I'll get into that, but those are pretty cool. Um, as usual with premium products, you know, there's a lot of serialized cards. There's some one of ones, which would be really, really cool to hit. Obviously, your odds are pretty bad, but pretty sweet. And then another thing that kind of drew me to this one is the masterpieces so i'll show you some of those but it's really like pieces of art like artists have done renditions of players and those are made into cards so like that's right up my alley as a designer and lover of art um and uh yeah that's that's why i kind of do like chronology volume 2 um it's why i think it's worth checking out the set on eBay, looking for cards. Um, I I wouldn't really suggest w buying boxes um, because they are pretty expensive for a premium product and you're not like 
very likely to get your money back on them where other products have a little bit better uh, return, I would say. But each box is going to get you four cards and you're going to get a base card, a zero degree Celsius potentially instead of that base card. Those are one in three boxes. And so the odds I'm showing you here are per box, but because there's only one pack, they're also for per pack. So all the odds are like per box, but also per pack, because there's only one pack in the box. It's a really quick open, which is actually another thing I kind of like about it and and kind of does suck a little bit. But because it's it's a four card box, you you open it quickly. There's just hits. There's no base to like rifle through and then not know what you're going to do with. So yeah, you get that base or Celsius card, you get an autograph and you get, uh, I guess, two more hits, which are either autos or memorabilia. But there's some reasons I don't love this set that I want to talk about off the top. Um, there's not really a true rookie card in this box that people are going after. There are rookies but they aren't like the true rookies. And there's a few different variants of rookies in this box. There's like a pot patch auto, there's an auto, there's that one with the diamond in it. And none of them are really like the rookie card to chase. Um, there's ones that like I think that I would want the most, but some other people might want a different one more than me. So it's not really like a rookie card chasing set really which is okay the other thing that kind of bugs me is like it's a bit of a confusing set so when you're looking on ebay it's like kind of hard to figure out which cards are which or what the variants are or they're named something but then the name is actually not on the card and the card says something else like it says timeless memories but the card is called franchise hits or something and it's like this, this is very difficult to search for or understand when you're trying to look at all the cards. So hopefully that what I'm showing you today will help a little bit with that, but it, I wish it was a little more clear when you're looking at the cards. The other thing is like the odds are a bit tough to figure out um, because they'll give you odds on the box. And this is something I've noticed with Upper Deck in general where they're like, you know, it's one in three to get this autograph patch card, but then actually it's one in three, but some of them, some of the players are much worse odds and some of the players are much better odds. So there's like, there's no real way to figure out the math. And like, I understand why they're doing that, but it's also pretty tough to look at and be like, okay, what are my odds of getting this card? Like, generally speaking, the TLDR is like the odds of getting the card that you want are very bad. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty much what they're telling you. It's just really not that easy to figure out. Um, and then obviously like, I think the time capsule cards, which I'll get into a little more, but basically you open the card and get another card are pretty cool. Um, but the cards you get out of them are minis. And so I'm not really like a huge fan of minis. It would be cool if they had a time capsule that was like a larger time capsule or something. And then you opened it and a regular size card came out. I don't know, just an idea for Upper Deck if, if they're watching this. Uh, <laughs> try that out, maybe. But that's just my opinion. The other thing that I would be remiss not to talk about off the top is the Letterman patches. So if you're familiar with Upper Deck, they do these letters, uh, and you can combine the letters into the player's full name. So, you know, you can get P-R-I-C-E and get Carrie Price and they look wicked on a shelf or as a display. And it's a great thing to try and collect. The problem is in Chronology Volume 1, they had these patches and they look kind of like patches would be on the back of a jersey. But in this year, in Chronology Volume 2, the patches are kind of this like plastic letter that you might get at Dollarama to like make a sign or something. They look really cheap. And so people were not pleased when these came out and Upper Deck kind of had their backs against the wall. And I think they, they know they made a bit of a mistake here, but unfortunately this happened because 
the company that was making their original patches was affected by COVID. So I do understand that they had to do something, but this solution kind of like just doesn't have the best eventual outcome for the card. And so people don't love these as much anymore. And it kind of takes a little bit away from how great the box is. We'll talk a little bit more about patches when I show you some of the cool cards. But the one thing I wanted to mention before we get into it is uh, in this set, there actually is game used hockey memorabilia. So if you've been paying attention, super close attention to some of the patches that you hit and other products, they will now say player worn jersey patch. So player worn and game used are different, right? So game used is the player actually wore that jersey in a game and player worn just means literally that like the player has worn the jersey could have been at a press conference it could have been in practice i guess or it really doesn't specify and so it could kind of have been any time whereas these ones and this is not the case for every jersey in this set but there are a bunch where they're actually game used uh jerseys so i actually think that's pretty cool um, and another reason to kind of love this as like a more of a collector's set. And then before I really dig into like what's in this box, I wanted to just talk a little bit about like, why is this volume two versus volume one? The big difference is volume one was entirely retired players and volume two focuses a lot more on uh, like active players and rookies. Now there's still some retired players in volume two, but they've added all the newer players to the set. And so volume one was very much about retired players and you couldn't even chase rookies because, well, the active players weren't in the box. So that's that's the reason I kind of like volume two more um, is it does have the active guys and I, like that's the way I tend to lean. But some people really liked being able to buy a box that only had retired players. So I totally understand that. The other thing that's missing from Volume 2 is there was some really nice one-of-ones with game-used gear, like they had like pieces of sticks and things like that. Um, and I think that's their way of kind of offsetting not having rookies and things like that. But other than that, like when you look on eBay or you look wherever at Chronology Volume 1 and Volume 2, the design is pretty much identical. It's It's actually really difficult to figure out which cards are from which set and like I guess that's okay because it's all like volume one and volume two it's meant to be part of one set but it's very tough to figure out where the line is drawn and which year this is from and then there's updates and so I kind of wish they did like a little bit more for volume two that they didn't have in volume one or like made them a little bit different to differentiate them even a lot of the inserts are like just the same thing so that's kind of like a bit of a letdown for me it's just weird that they didn't have a little bit more to differentiate between the two so i'm going to get into what we can expect to get in a box and also what we can expect probably not to get but you never know uh what hits you can get and uh, before I do that, I should mention that you should uh, check out Cardboard Connection or somewhere else to find your checklist. So look up 2019-2020 Upper Deck Chronology Volume 2 on Cardboard Connection or anywhere else that has a checklist. And this is where you can get your odds. You can find out all the rookies that are in the box, all the players that are in the box, all the different variations. Um, it's a really great resource. And if you happen to be listening to this, instead of following along with all my visuals, you could go check out some of the hits there. You could check out a lot of the things on eBay to see what everything looks like. Um, but of course, head on over to YouTube if you wanna watch the slideshow of beautiful cards. Another good thing to note before I start is that the prices I'm gonna show you are in Canadian dollars. Um, and also, I'll show some sold cards, I'll show some listed cards, um, but all of these are just a price that they sold at or a price that they're listed at. It's not necessarily what their value is. Just meant to give you an idea of like what range we're talking. 
So the base cards, uh, every pack is going to have a base card in it, unless it has a zero degree Celsius card in it, which I'll show you next. But the base cards are all serialized out of 222, which is kind of cool. So there's only 222 of each base card, which really shows you like kind of how much of this product was printed. Um, and then there's 100 players in that base set. So it's kind of a limited base set. And the cards range from, you know, as cheap as $5 to there's, I saw a dry sale sell for $40. So some of the base cards have a little bit of value, um, but kind of a nice set. And uh, the design is pretty cool. You've got the player kind of on there uh, doing their thing on the ice, but then the background is sort of grayed out and you've got a nice border. All the chrono chronology cards kind of share this for the most part. There's uh, a border that's kind of got like, it's almost like an artsy frame or like a picture frame around the edge. Uh, and the base ones are just kind of this uh, brownish, grayish color. And you get into like variations on that border uh, as you get into bigger hits. So the other thing that you might get in place of that base card for your first card in the pack is a zero degree Celsius inserts. So these are actually kind of cool. It's kind of like their, their version of clear cut. Player is uh, basically cut out and then the background is completely clear. There's a nice like blue zero degree Celsius logo and uh, these are pretty inexpensive. You can get like a Lemieux for like $24, uh, Brodeur for 18. So you can get these base cards and these zero degree Celsius cards all in like the 10 to $20 range if you're interested in the sets, which is all right considering that's like 10% of the price of the box. I think uh, the box prices these days kind of vary because it's been out for a few months, but typically you're paying about $200 and on release they came out for, it was more like 160 to 180 I think, um, if you're pre-ordering. Yeah, these, these zero degree Celsius are kind of cool. I, I kind of like them. They do photograph terribly, so if you're looking on eBay or on ComC, um, they kind of look terrible, which maybe is a, a reason you could get them a little cheaper. Like people aren't buying them because they look pretty bad when you're looking at the photos, but I think in, in your hands, they're gonna look pretty cool. And then the other cool thing with the zero degree Celsius uh, cards is if you were opening the first volume of Chronology on uh, EPAC, Upper Deck EPAC, which is the online pack opening uh, software, if you completed the whole set and you were one of the first ones to do so, you could convert that set into a Bobby Orr zero degree Celsius card with his autograph and it is just sweet. Like it is so cool. Now, volume two for Chronology isn't out on EPAC yet. And the weird thing about zero degree Celsius is the inserts in volume two are literally the exact same set as was in volume one. So I'm not really sure how that's gonna work. I'm hoping they do like another achievement because these are pretty sick. And the like getting an autographed Bobby Orr is pretty wild. Maybe they could do one for a player like Gretzky or McDavid in volume two. And I'm sure people would love that. So yeah, you're getting one of those base or you're getting one of those zero degree Celsius in every pack. And then from there, it's kind of like, you're not sure what you're gonna get, right? There's autographed cards, there's patch cards, um, but it's a little bit more varied after these two common options. For every base card, or for I guess 75 of the base card players, there's a base gold relic card. And these are actually pretty nice. They are numbered out of five, 10, or 25. And some of them have autographs, some of them don't. They're called gold relic cards because they've got a jersey patch in them. These are game used jersey patches. And I actually, I really love the style that they've used to show the jersey patch. It's this really cool shield, nicely centered in the card. I don't really love that it says jersey below it. Like we know what it is, but that's fine, I guess. And then yeah, some of them are autographed. And uh, these, these go for a pretty good penny. There's... Uh, 
an Ovi for sale right now for 340 bucks. That is really nice. Uh, and, and a Ginla sold for about 275 So these would be a pretty, pretty nice hit in this pack. And then I just wanted to show you before I go on to the next type of card, there's a Joe Thornton auction on right now for one of these. And it is a wonderful card. Uh, three color patch. It's got his autograph. It's him kind of in action skating and he's got that massive beard flowing in the wind. Uh, it's with the Sharks. Obviously he was there when they were making this, but really, really cool card. Was last at 165 bucks when I checked that auction. Uh, so the next type of card you can get in Chronology is a Franchise History Auto. Now, when you look for this on eBay, you might have to do a couple searches because if you put in Franchise History Auto, you won't get everything because it just looks like the base card but autographed, which it basically is. It doesn't say Franchise History Autos anywhere on this card, so that's good to know. Um, but this is like basically the whole base set. Um, you're going to get one of these in about every 3.2 so you're probably getting one in a pack if you open it but that said this is one of those ones where there's groups of players with different odds so if you're looking at a dougie hamilton which is in group g uh one of one so that's like very likely to get that but group a with mcdavid in it is one in 67. so those odds are very different than the one in 3.2 that they kind of tell you is how often you'll get one of these cards in a pack. So getting that McDavid is a lot harder to get than a Dougie Hamilton card. But pretty cool cards, the base cards with a nice autograph on them, hard to argue with that. But even cooler is you can get the rookies with that same uh, base card auto. The other thing with this entire set is that they are rookies, but I'm not really sure if you can consider them true rookies. If you look on ComC, they say rookie year, and that's kind of how I'm viewing them, is that all the rookies in this set are rookie year, if you care about that. Um, they don't say rook RC on them or like Young Guns or anything like to denote that they're a rookie, it's just they are a rookie, and this was their year, and uh, these autographs are pretty nice. Um, the Kirby Doc is listed for about 120 bucks, uh, paling sold for 20 so you know not not crazy expensive cards but pretty cool cards uh, and then some of these you can get uh, with a patch and these are called franchise history rookie auto patches technically speaking but again you might have to do some a few searches on ebay to find the right one um, so yeah these are really wonderful too they've got that um, shield patch style numbered out of 10 they've got the autograph pretty much everything you want if you're interested in a rookie card of this set um the rasmus sandine sold for about 500 bucks so you know toronto player rookie card auto patch serialized out of 10 yeah it's pretty cool the kind of unfortunate part about the uh the rookies in this is that many of them are redemptions so for whatever reason, they don't have them in the packs, so you might get a redemption or a franchise history rookie redemption. And uh, yeah, we don't we don't know. I don't think what cards these are yet, but you might hypothesize that these are Lafreniere's or they might be Stutzlas. Um, but for now, they're just redemptions that you have to wait on, which kind of sucks. It also kind of sucks that I can't show you how cool those cards will probably look. I am I think they're going to be pretty sweet. So I guess stay tuned for those. Maybe we'll do a little update when these finally do come out. And then the last kind of thing in this franchise series, if you want to call it that, is the franchise finds. And this is 14 players. They're all numbered out of 25. And this is just, this is just the rookies. So... I guess they're saying franchise finds is like potentially new franchise players. Um, I'm showing a Jack Hughes here, which sold for 275 bucks. But this one, uh, I really don't love the design of. Uh, it looks a little bit cheap. Upper deck logo is in full color for some reason. 
uh, as is the logo of the devils that they shown and the layout of the card is horizontal. It's just, there's a lot that I wish would be better for what is such a big hit. Like it's such a big hit to get this card. And then I'm like, ah, I don't really like what it looks like. So maybe that's just me. Maybe this is like your design and that's, that's wicked, but yeah, you can get this for all the rookies. And then, uh, the next thing you might find is a one in 100 relics. So these are actually pretty cool. Uh, it's a horizontal card as well, but the patches in these, like the actual patch in the window is often really, really cool. So they're all like three colors or unique. Um, the, the ones for the older players though, you'll often see like a discoloration in the jersey or like it's a yellow jersey or it really really looks like those older jersey styles and it makes the card like extra cool so there's 35 of these cards 17 of them are autographed cards uh you can get these in a bunch of different serializations they're out of 10 out of 25 out of 50 out of 100 some of them have aut autographs and some of them don't uh, 17 of the 35 had, have autographs, but there's some pretty cool cards in here. You can get a McDavid out of 25. Those have sold for about 450, 7, 720. Pretty, pretty sweet. Um, and you can get some of those retired players like Iserman, Bossy. Now we're going to get to some very, very cool cards that you can get out of this box. And those are the Diamond Relics. So they come in the base card variation. All 100 base players have this. These are numbered out of 36. And as you might have figured out from the name, they're called Diamond Relics. They've actually got a diamond embedded in the card. These also kind of photograph terribly. So when you're looking them at them on eBay, it's not super apparent how cool these are. But yeah, they've got a 14 karat 35 millimeter diamond in the card. And I expect this is part of the reason that the boxes are a little more expensive. Like they're jamming diamonds and cards. It's going to be a couple more bucks to make them. But yeah, I think this would be a really th cool thing to pull out of a pack. Um, and the base cards, you know, and Elias Pettersson sold for 92 bucks. Pretty reasonable. But you can also get these with autographs. And there's also a black variant that is not autographed. So there's base diamond relic black cards and these are all out of nine so only nine of them made and 42 out of the 75 cards that have black versions are suzuki's and uh yeah they've got the diamond in them some of them are autographed and these look really friggin cool now you know they're still not crazy expensive as far as big hits go um, Pasternak has a card sold at 146 bucks. Uh, now Pasternak's is not autographed, but still. And there's a Nick Suzuki listed. That one is autographed for 905 bucks. Now who knows if he'll sell it for that, but it's a pretty friggin' cool card. Now we will get into something controversial, but that people do collect, and that is the Letterman patches. Yes, the Letterman patches. Now, the one I'm showing on the screen is a Nathan McKinnon. All of these are numbered to either 10 or 35, and some of them have autographs and some of them don't. 39 of them do not have autographs. And uh, yeah, I can just tell you from looking at this, like the A in his name is black, and it looks like a letter you just kind of bought and put in this card, and it really doesn't look very cool it really falls flat otherwise these cards are cool it like be really cool to make the name out of them but it's just not that awesome and you know nathan mckinnon is obviously amazing and most of the time his cards go for a lot especially big hits like this but this one sold for 75 bucks and this is the most expensive letterman patch that is not autographed that i've seen on ebay period for 75 bucks so i guess in a way if you're looking at getting a letterman series 
and you don't have the the big bucks that you'd normally need like this is your this is your entry like this you go get these because you can make one now um but yeah i think they really just missed the boat on this and i think they know that and there was nothing they could do but it's just it's just kind of disappointing now in the same breath when you look at the autograph letterman patches autos which are 69 out of the 108 so it's more of them are autographed than not that same patch card looks a lot better the autograph is on the acetate that goes over top and it actually does look quite a bit better with the autograph on top you you don't notice as much kind of that cheapness uh that the letter kind of is really flat and the autograph obviously gives it an extra element of coolness uh so you know obviously every autograph is different and as you have the whole name written out starts to look really cool because the autographs are a bit different each time the player does it um and so yeah mcdavid autograph even with that patch style sold for 505 bucks and that is an out of 10. so it's still a really cool card and uh i wouldn't say no to hitting that in a pack for sure something to know here is that i say out of 10 and of course you know they create the entire name of mcdavid so there's an m there's a c d-a-v-i-d but that out of 10 is per letter so there's going to be 10 m's 10 c's 10 d's etc and i mean i'm just assuming but i'm pretty sure you know in mcdavid's case he's got two d's so that means there's 20 d's in the world um so yeah it's it's by the letter or you could think of it as by the entire player's name they make 10 of those just so everyone's on the same page but what I'm also showing here is the patch cards for uh, all of those retired players. So any retired player, they made the patch cards before, and so they were able to do what they normally do and make like a stitched version. And it looks like it's from a jersey. Now, it's important to know that like this is not from a jersey at all. They make these specifically for these cards to put them in these cards so it's still like it's still made like it's still fake but it looks a lot cooler it's like a little bit 3d which i think is the main thing you're missing from the other one there's no depth to it um and then this the signature is on the acetate on top of that as usual but it really just looks a lot better and you can make those with all of the retired players and in 1920 you can grab a wayne gretzky and uh, that's going to set you back a couple pennies because the G in Gretzky sold for 700 bucks. And uh, by my quick math, that's a lot. Um, what is it? G-R-E-T-Z-K-Y. That's seven, I think. So he gets up there pretty damn quick. Um, but it would make for a very cool shelf display. I'd be curious to know, does the G sell for more money than, say, the T? or then the R, or are all the letters pretty much the same because you want the entire name? I don't know. I would think maybe the first letter of their name is a little bit sexier in, in case you like only want that one letter uh, and you're not getting the whole thing. But it's also one of those things where like if anyone's collecting, you know, Gretzky or McDavid, there's only 10 of these. So whoever's doing that is going to want it really badly. So like you can probably sell these to those people at a, at a premium because there's only so many people that can make this set. Well, actually there's only 10 people that can make this set. So that's kind of cool. And maybe there's like a little bit of uh, opportunity to meet a lot of people in the collecting world. If you're like that person going after the Gretzky set. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the next thing we're going to get into is canvas cards. So one of the other reasons I love this set is uh, the canvas cards. I am normally a fan of canvas, but they do a really good job in this set with their canvas and making the canvas seem kind of natural rather than just printing cards on canvas because they can. So the first thing you're going to find are canvas autos. There's 39 players that have these. And these autos are all done in a nice silver marker. They look really cool. Really, really cool. 
And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm showing Matt's Nasland here winning the cup with the Habs, which is pretty neat. I've got his card in the three variants you can get. There's a base one where the border uh, is blue. It says Timeless Memories on it. So sometimes you have to search for Timeless Memories to find these cards. Not sure why it says that. They're not called that as far as the set is concerned, but that's what it says. Um, so you can get those blue base ones, and those are in one in every seven pack. But then there's also green ones that are numbered out of ten, uh, and those have a green border, which, you know, these colors are, are fine, but, like, they sometimes kind of clash with the card. Like, this green one with the Montreal jerseys is, like, I just don't really love it that much, and considering it's a ten out of t or a numbered out of ten card, I don't know, whatever. But... The ones I do think are really cool looking are the one of ones, and those have a black border. So these are one of one cards. There's only one of them. So this Mads Nasland I found sold for 280 bucks, and you know it's a one of one. So there's only one of these in the world, and uh, that is pretty cool. That would be a very big hit in this thing. So then they also have a variant uh, that they call Canvas Autos Red. And these are 1 in 25, but for some reason they only made this for Dick Duff and Anton Stasny. Not sure what the decision making process was there, but these are the only two guys that have this card. Um, and it looks like they're in black and white, and signature is gold. Uh, and they're kind of selling at all kinds of different prices between 30 and 100 bucks. Those are fine, they're cool. But then you start getting into. Canvas Auto's red memorabilia. So this is where you start adding those patches. These are 1 in 15. And again, this it depends on the player. But uh, the one I'm showing here is a Doug Wilson. It's pretty cool because it's actually got a piece of his stick in there. And then I don't know if they asked him to do this or if he decided to do this, but he actually signed the stick rather than signing the card. So it's like a little stick signed in a window of his card. Yeah, and those are pretty nice looking cards. Um, but they are just like the photo of the player on canvas and, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's okay. It's pretty nice. It's got a red border. They're cool. But what I really like, and this is what really drew me to this, uh, box is the masterpiece set. So in the masterpieces, they've commissioned artists to draw or I guess paint the players for these cards so it's original art they say it's made by the industry's finest sports artists and those are made into hockey cards so uh you know sometimes the paintings look a little more realistic sometimes they're a little more abstract patrick kane here kind of reminds me of patrick line when you look at his face like it's kind of like hilarious he's doing like a cool point but I don't know, like if I, he didn't have the jersey and the logo on, I thought I would think it might be line A. But these are really, really cool. The the base canvas masterpiece autos are 1 in 20, and there's 28 players with these. They've got a blue border, um, that nice like painting, which the painting just makes so much sense with canvas cards, right? Like it's like there's a reason that there's a canvas card now. It's because it's a painting. Obviously. And then uh there's a nice, nice, nice gold autograph, and there's one from Bobby Orr in the Blackhawks jersey. Gold autograph, sold for 245 bucks, and it's honestly a gorgeous card. Like, that's pretty good deal on a Bobby Orr card that really is beautiful. And then, as with everything else in this set, there's variants, so you can get canvas masterpiece auto parallels some of these have patches in them some of them don't um, they're all autographed in silver or gold they've all got that artwork that is unique really like it's obviously based on a photo of their their likeness but unique artwork that's made into cards the aginla is really cool looking it's got this nice effect of the paintbrush going on um, some of these are horizontal, some of them are vertical, uh, so you can get kind of both. And then they're different serializations, so, you know, you can get red ones that are out of 35, uh, green ones out of 10, 
and then there are some black ones that are one of ones but i haven't seen any on ebay yet so those are big big hits i really really love the joe thornton here which is listed at 315 uh if you're a joe thornton fan this is like the perfect card it's him in the locker room kind of just smiling at you it's got the silver autograph on it it's got the jersey patch he's holding up a puck which i believe is his 400th goal um just amazing there's a sadin one three color patch where he's kind of waving it seems like this is like him saying goodbye to the nhl also autographed so these are really incredible cards um and one from my oilers of mark messier which sold for 185 bucks pretty decent and uh the jersey patch in here just looks like it's like a really off white it looks like it's a really old low old jersey again autographed beautiful painting as the card um so i'm i'm really just kind of loving these um they look awesome and you can get these for the rookies which I think if I'm looking in these boxes, like this is probably what I'm most excited to pull is this masterpieces or art uh, background cards of the rookies. So, you know, you can get a Cody Glass uh, autographed in this beautiful gold. He's in his Vegas jersey, so it just matches beautifully. Um, these ones have a blue border and they are one in 32 packs. And there's only eight rookies so you know there's eight to find uh there are three of them that are one in 215 packs and those are redemptions I'll talk a little bit more about in the, those in a minute but those are the quinn hughes jack hughes and kale mccarr cards which i haven't found a photo of yet but those are going to be wonderful whenever those redemptions get redeemed uh, really looking forward to what those look like. There are some Kirby Docs out there. So these are really cool cards. Uh, one of them has an auto patch. Uh, the red one that's out of 35. You can get a green out of 10. And again, there's a one, on, one of one black one out there somewhere that someone's going to pull. And that is going to be a beautiful, beautiful card. Hopefully Kirby Doc is coming back soonish. Um, from his injury, but I think he's an awesome rookie. And then to kind of round out this box is duels, triples, and quads. And I don't really feel like these fit super well in this box. Like it's kind of random. Um, I do like the duels. You can get ones with like Lemieux and Yager with their autos, um, which is just a beautiful card. The two of them are on there. They've got their old buckets on, you know, both autographed, numbered out of 25. Really cool card. Um, these are numbered out of 10, 15, or 25, and there's 13 different ones you can get. But yeah, that's a pretty sweet one. And then they go up from there. You can get a triple. There's one with Henrik, Daniel, and uh, the Sedins, I should say. Henrik and Daniel kind of speaks for itself, but the Sedins. And then they've got their pal Roberto Luongo on there. This is, however, one of those cards that, you know, this is a huge hit, but they are sticker autos. So I'd be kind of disappointed to get such a massive hit, and then they've got the sticker autos on there. So I guess they couldn't get the Sedins in person to sign this card, but uh, still pretty cool to get those three on a card. And then the kind of biggest one in this set is the quad autos. There's a fun one that's got four goalies and Carey Price, Bobrovsky, Rene, and Vasilevsky. Um, one of those guys is not doing so well this year, so yikes. That's Bobrovsky, if you didn't know who I was talking about. Uh, Carey Price is doing just fine. But then the big card there is there's a quad autos of all your favorite ma Maple Leafs, or what you might expect to be all your favorite Maple Leafs. It's John Tavares, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, and then Kasperi Kapanen is in there. Which, I mean, that's pretty sweet. It's out of 10. Uh, it's listed at 2K right now. Who knows if they're getting that price, but four Maple Leaf autos on one card is pretty cool in my books. And so let's grab, let's get on to the last 
thing that you can get in these boxes and kind of the reason that I started thinking about doing this box in the first place and that is the time capsules. So you're going to get one of these in every three and a half boxes so you're pretty likely to get one. No, not guaranteed or anything but likely. Uh, there's 30 players that have these. There are also variants. There's gold ones and black ones. The gold ones are numbered out of 25 on the back and the black ones are out of 10 or less. And uh, these are interesting because you can rip them open to find cards inside of them, which is kind of fun. We're going to do some of that later uh, on the show. But it also obviously affects their value, right? So when you're buying them, you can buy them unripped or you can buy them ripped. Um, and if you're looking here, we've got a carry price gold for 100 bucks, and that's numbered out of 25, but that's one that hasn't been opened yet. Versus you look at a Drew Doughty Black, which is out of 10, the hardest ones to get, and it's only 35 bucks because someone opened it up. Now, I can't blame them. It would be pretty hard not to. Uh, even just to figure out, like, does a better card come out of that black card? And I was hoping I could answer that question for you, but it's pretty hard to tell because there's so few of these black ones. There's so few that have been opened, and uh, I don't know. So maybe we'll get a black one. We can open it up and see what's inside. It's going to be pretty exciting. So, yeah, basically you turn the card over, and there's, like, a little window uh, and you kind of have to rip into it like a savage and just ruin your card. <laughs> uh, and then inside, there's a little mini card. And the card inside is like in no way related to the card that you opened. Um, it's just another card. And it's a mini, uh, which is basically like a tinier card. And there's a whole nother set within the set of minis. And these cards are... You know, the same photo as the base card generally. So I've got the Svechnikov up here and you can see, you know, same, 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 same photo, just on a smaller card. And there are is a whole set of these cards that you can get. There's 136 players. Some of them are serial numbered to 60 or 90. There's some that have black, sorry, there's some that have blank backs and those are numbered to three. I'm not really sure why the ones that have blank backs are so special. Um, it kind of seems like that was something that was a misprint back in the day that people like to collect, and now they're kind of doubling down on that. Um, but for whatever reason, the ones that don't have all the fun information on the back are worth more money, or worth... They're not necessarily worth more money, but they're harder to find. Um, and apparently there's also one of ones with blank backs, but I didn't see any of those in my searches. Um, so, you know, these are, these are pretty cool. And the McDavid that's numbered to 60s was sold for about 65 bucks. Um, Crosby sold at about 85. But, you know, if those are like the best players, that's not a huge hit when you're opening that card. Now, there are some big boys in here. You can get a Patrick Waugh autographed um, time capsule mini, and that sold for 400 bucks. You can get Carey Price. Uh, you can get the retired players, obviously, and the active ones. And they're all serialized to different numbers, so some are harder to get than others, obviously. The Patrick Waugh is an out of five, so there's only five out there, and we all know how much people love Patty Wah. The one thing that is in here that I can't really tell you too much information about is there are Time Capsules Mini Painting Redemptions. The reason I can't tell you much about them is I couldn't find any information about them. I couldn't find any for sale. I couldn't find anyone talking about them. So if you know, please leave it in the comments or find me on Instagram and let me know. I'll make a follow up. What I assume this is, is like the original artwork for some of these is uh, included in here, which I think would be really friggin' cool. Or maybe you get like an actual full-sized painting, like the actual artwork. Because it's a redemption, you can send it in and they'll send you back, like, whatever. So, I kind of want, like, this would be a really cool hit just to figure out, like, what is this thing that you're gonna get out of here? Um, and it's kind of like this fun mystery for me right now, but... 
I don't know what's in there if you get that. I just know that that's part of the checklist. They're one of ones, so there are only some, but they don't tell you what they might be. And then the last thing, as is true with a lot of Upper Deck products, is you can get updates. So the updates are many. There's 388 potential updates in here. But unlike other sets, these are only updates from the Volume 1, 1819 Chronology Volume 1, and the 2014-15 Masterpieces set. So lots of cool cards in there, um, but they're all from two other sets. So it's a very cool Al McInnes autographed uh, serial to 25 with a piece of his stick where the patch card might be uh, in those cool retro St. Louis blues jerseys uh, with the stripes across the middle, kind of similar to the reverse retro, except I guess in the unreversed original colors. Um, so that's pretty cool. There's my guy Grant Fewer listed at 275 bucks with the diamond in it and autographed. So lots of cool updates, but Obviously, I can't spend all day telling you about 388 update cards, so those are kind of just bonuses if you get them. And uh, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So hopefully this breakdown of chronology helped you figure out what you could get in here. Um, I think if you're looking to collect some of these sets, like they're they're relatively inexpensive to go out and get, but they aren't necessarily easy to find. When I was looking for things, like you're not necessarily going to find every card on eBay. You kind of have to keep your eye open. It's a bit of a hunt. Now the product hasn't been out for that long. It's only been maybe two and a half months, so things are going to start coming out. The EPAC release will probably happen as well. But I think it's an interesting set. I probably wouldn't suggest that you go and spend, you know, 200 bucks on this box because you're not going to get great bang for your buck unless you hit one of these crazy cards, but I don't really see that happening very often. And uh, the ones that I think are really cool in here are pretty hard to get. So the, the stuff you're normally getting are okay. But with all that said, I want to open some right now and see what maybe we can get out of here. So let's open up some time capsules and see what the heck kind of minis we can get out of there. And then uh, we're going to open up one box. So let's do that now. Alrighty. So as you can see, we have a Patty Kane time capsule here. Unopened. That's what the back looks like there. There's like a little window. Uh, so we're going to see what the heck is in there. It's going to be fun to open. And we got a Zidane Chara. Figured I'd get like a more of a star and then... Yeah, I mean, Char is a star, but he's no Patty Kane. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we're going to bust into that one as well. And then, of course, we've got our box here. Four cards. Figure out what the heck is going on in that. But first off, let's open this thing. And first part of the experience is how hard are these to open? I've got my little knife here, so I think we're going to use that and get it started. From what I've seen other people doing it, it's pretty hard to open without... Um, completely destroying the card, but I would like to keep it relatively decent. Um, oh, so there's like, you can get a kind of a window in there. I see a bit of an autograph. Autographed Calgary player looks like maybe Al McKinnis. Yeah, Al McKinnis autographed mini. So that's actually really cool. I like that. Um, and how do you get this? Oh, it's in actually a sleeve to come right out of the pack. It's in a sleeve Pretty wicked uh, Al McKinnis autograph Numbered out of 15. All right That is pretty sweet. I am into that. You know, I'm an Oilers fan. So it's a flames player, but I really liked Al McKinnis Huge shot. I watched I watched him more on the blues, but numbered 8 out of 15 that is actually very cool. All right. So, cute little mini there. Look at that. There's the size comparison. That's what comes out of the Patty Kane. So, very cool. The Patty Kane for reference and also the Chera uh, 
you can buy these time capsules for about 40, 50, 60 bucks, generally speaking. Uh, ones like Quinn Hughes or McDavid go for a bit more, but looking at them unopened, that's about the price you're looking at, generally speaking. And these are the base ones. There's gold and black variants as well, but just for these ones, that's what you're looking at. And get that Al McKinnis there. And uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. That was kind of fun. It is enjoyable to open these, which was kind of my whole thing going into these. Um, so let's see what's inside the Chara. Take that little mini piece out there and we get like a little brief preview sort of. Looks like a Kopitar. I don't see an auto though, so this might be just kind of your base, base mini. Yeah, so we've got an Anze Kopitar. That one didn't open nearly as well. Look at that, this one was clean. That one was like, no, nope, not me. Um, so let's get this out of here. See what we're working with. So even though like normal minis do have the serialization, this one's out of 60, number 20 out of 60. On's a Kopitar chronology mini there. Cool looking, but I wouldn't say that's one of the better hits. Still obviously a good player, but not what you're really hoping for in there. So, hey, not too bad opening those things, but let's get to the big boy open. The Chronology Volume 2. For some reason, the seal on these is not in the center. It's on the side here. Something I noticed when I was checking this out. Um, normally, the products are sealed in the center of the box. So, not this time, I guess. But, hey, product's different. Let's open that puppy up. So then you open the box. It's like a little window. Look at that. Um, and inside you've got your big old fat pack. Let's get that out of there. And yeah, look at that. Nice thick chronology volume two pack. Four premium cards per pack. What will we get? This is a fun one. Definitely gonna be some cool stuff in here. Let's try not to give you too much of a sneak preview on this back card. You might have already seen a glimpse. All right, our base card. We didn't get one of those zero degree Celsius cards, which I'm a little upset about because those actually did look cool. I'd like to hold one. Maybe we'll have to get one. But we've got a Ryan O'Reilly base card. These are numbered to 222. So that was pretty much as expected. Pretty much what you get in every one of these is one of these base cards. And with our first hit, we have, ooh, that is cool looking, a Ken Danico Chronology Letterman Auto number 220. Hey, not, a, not the Gretzky name, but uh, you know, one of the updates, I think it's an update. Here, let me hide the other cards here quickly. I think it's an update card. Yeah, 2018-19 uh, Ken Danico Letterman. Very cool card. And with our next card, we have... Ooh, another auto. We've got a Gary Dornhofer. Not a player that I'm familiar with, actually, but he's actually quite a bit older by the looks of it, playing without his helmet on. Come on, kids. Nice auto there. So I believe this is just our kind of base auto uh, that you might expect to get in every pack. But still, just a very cool looking card. It's The silver there actually has like a nice rainbow to it as you kind of move it around. That's pretty nice. Um, all right, so let's get to our final hit of this thing. What will it be? What will it be? I know it's a thick card because my thumb is touching it. New Jersey Devils. Oh, we got another Letterman. Wow, Scott Gomez. Scott Gomez Letterman numbered to 25. The O. Very, 
Very cool. Um, I think Scott Gomez is actually really into hockey cards. I've seen him on social media talking about it. And yeah, two Letterman out of a pack is pretty cool. I kind of, I mean, for the purposes of this, wish I would have pulled uh, a couple different things, but still very cool. And two Letterman patches. So we can make the word do. Look at that. Chronology. S volume 2. I keep wanting to call it Series 2. But, uh, yeah, those are pretty cool hits. Um, and I must say, like, it's a fun product to open because you've got uh, all these autos and all these different patches. I didn't get a time capsule, which is why I bought a couple so I could make sure I could open them. But those are pretty fun to open up to. Um, and yeah, that is what Chronology Volume 2 is all about. It's not my favorite product, but I will say it's fun to open. And there's some very cool stuff inside of it. There's some artsy stuff that I'm very about. Those canvas cards are very cool. And uh, yeah, I guess, uh, do, I, do I have to finish the Scott Gomez and the Ken Danico letterman now or is that how it works when you pull one like now you're you're forced to finish it i don't i'm not sure how this this goes um <laughs> i'm just kidding of course uh but those are very cool and uh yeah i hope you learned a little bit about chronology today learned a little bit about some of the odds some of the players you can get uh enjoyed watching me get these sweet letters out of my box uh if you did Leave a comment. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, what your favorite card of all these might have been because, you know, in a normal set that I've been looking at, like Young Guns or um, Future Watch Auto, like it's very obvious what people are looking for, whereas this one I think there's a little more personal preference involved. So I'd love to hear what you think is uh, exciting in this pack or if you think it's just not something you're interested in. Um, also curious to hear what you would like to see broken down next um i'm gonna be doing some stuff for series two already but uh you know should i look into doing opg platinum or artifacts or like what what should i really dig into next as the next deep dive so yeah check me out on instagram or wherever at near mint hockey uh you can also join our discord our discord has been really bumping lots of great chatter uh so check out the show notes for that but until next time go get those chronology letterman <laughs> <laughs>